Okay, so from the last couple days, I'm going to back this thing up just so I can take a quick shot of the assignment. So she got the, so she can take a look and see at least how she's doing. I'll trust that she can um, um, pause this so she can see this and I can leave it there for a great amount of time. It's pretty bad when my nose is so big I got to back way the heck up. Okay, they can pause that, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Okay, so what's your issues? What do you want to talk about? We're talking about 66. Did you get it figured out? Um, I still don't understand why. Okay, what page again? 227. 227.66. Okay, okay. So what we have, and this is a good a good problem. So you got 8 factorial over 5 factorial. Okay. So what we definitely could do is we could go ahead and multiply out the top, and we can multiply out the bottom. So we could just take, you know, our calculator and do 8 factorial or our, but you know what? There's a shortcut. Here's the way I look at it. I got 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. On the bottom I get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So before I grab my calculator and start calculating, what can I do? And then we're done. Everything else cancels. What if you do multiply it out? So I didn't if you multiply it out, I'll just go ahead and calculate it real quick. So I can do 8, math, probability, factorial is 40320 over 5 factorial. I think 5 factorial is 120. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 But it's kind of neat to see that, there, that there's a little bit of a shortcut too. Okay. So if I did something like this, 101 factorial divided by 100 factorial, what would that be? No? 100. Or one, no? 101. Because 101 times 100 times da, 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 all the way down to 1, and then the bottom would be 100 times 99, and the 100, the 99, the 98, the 97, those would all cancel out. We're just left with the 101. Good. That is right there. That's a great ACT problem. Great ACT problem. Because some people go, ah! Or, if I want to do something like this, say if I did 101 factorial over 98 factorial, your calculator will not do 101 factorial. It won't. So you can't go 101 factorial equals, and then 98 factorial equals what you have to do is look at this theoretically, and what would it be? Okay, but how did I get that? Because the 98 all the way down would cancel with the 98 all the way down. There you go. Factorial. Factorial. 8. Factorial. 5. Factorial. Okay. Good. Those problems are important. I'm glad that we glad that we look at those. Okay. Good way to keep making us more well rounded and keep prepping us for the um, the ACT test. Anything you want to take a look at? There's one thing I'm going to show you that I think can be a, a, a time saver. 
and then we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this up for now. Okay, so next part is theoretical. Okay, let's look at the perfect squares. Zero, one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six. Da da da. Those are just the perfect squares. There's nothing greatly complicated about that. It's just the result of taking something in times itself. Look at the growth pattern. It grows one, and then it grows three, and then it grows five, seven, nine, eleven. Okay? Those are what's called the first differences. Okay? Anytime we're dealing with quadratics, they have a growth pattern like that. Okay? So if I would ask you to graph something like y equals x squared, we can actually graph it really, really, really quick if we take advantage of this pattern. Okay? Let's just go y equals x squared. Okay. So it's gonna my vertex is gonna be at zero zero. Okay. From there, well, if I increase by one, my result's gonna go up by one. What's it gonna go up by next time? Three. What's gonna go up by next time? Five. Oops. What's gonna go by next time? Seven. So it's an over, up, there's a pattern to this. Over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up five, over one, up seven. You don't have to plug in anything if you don't want. Once you find your vertex, you can just use the quadratic pattern. Okay, and then you can fold it over to the other side. And then you can sketch it out, okay? But, what if I would instead of doing squares, if I would double all of them. So let's say if instead I was going y equals 2x squared. Well, let's graph this down here as well. Uh, we talked about this when you were in ninth grade. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh, the IHOP thing a little bit, so vertical stretches. Okay, great, great. So we'll just do a quick review then. Okay, so this one will start at 0, 0. Okay, and then from there, we'd have an over, thank you, up, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. But since that's 2, all my vertical changes are now doubled. So I'm going to go over 1, up 2. From there, over 1, up and then from there, over 1 up 10, which I'm not going to take the time to do. Yeah, I forgot that we need to talk about that a little bit. So I just want to summarize what, what, this, what this A does. So this is probably noteworthy. If I have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, A, not only does A open up, make it open up or down, but if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, so I'm talking 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then it's going to be tall and thin. It's going to be steeper because you're going up more than your typical parabola. Okay? So like that times 2 that I just did in comparison to times 1. Okay? So if I compare both these graphs, you can see the bottom one is skinnier. It's, go, it's not really it, it's just taller at each point. Okay? So if I had something like if absolute value of A is less than 1, so i.e. A equals 1 half, A equals 1 fourth, stuff like that, how's your parabola going to look? It's going to be wide and short. OK? 
Okay. So if I would go back to this other graph, and instead of doing times 2, let's do another example over here on the same graph. Let's go y equals 1 half x squared. So my over and my up, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, it's going to be going up half as much each time. Okay, so let's zoom in on this here a little bit. So I'm going to go over 1, up a half. From that point, over 1, up 3 halves, or 1.5. From that point, I'm going to go over 1, up 5 halves. And then I could take that point, those points, and reflect it over, and then I've got something that looks like this. See how it's wider? Okay. So even though I use the term wider, I prefer to talk about being shorter. Because right here, it's a lot shorter. Here it's a lot shorter. Here it's a lot shorter. Okay. So every point gets squished down. Okay. So right now, if I would give you something like y equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 1. I really think it's going to be pretty easy for us to graph, okay, with all that we know now. I go negative b over 2a equals negative 2, plug in negative 2, so I'm going to go 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 1 minus 1. So 8 minus 16 minus 1 gives me negative 9, so my vertex is negative 2 and negative 9. Then from there, do I need to plug in any more points at all? No, we'll just use our quadratic pattern. Okay. From here, since this is positive 2, is this going to open up or down? Up. Okay. So from this point, I will go over 1 and up 2. Over 1 and up 6, because we're doing the 1, 3, 5 doubled. Okay. So I think those get a lot easier to graph quickly if you don't have to plug in points so much. Okay? So. Okay. Today. Um, it, you, you can do tables if you want. But if you like the over and up method using the quadratic pattern, you can just go ahead and get more points using that way. Okay? So. <clears throat> Four point three. Factoring and solving. Okay, we're gonna stop and we're basically gonna do a worksheet extravaganza for a little bit. Okay. First thing, let's just start off with a very, very, very basic example. If I had x squared plus three x plus two equals zero. Okay. This. No matter how hard we, we try, we're not going to be able to get x by itself. Because there's an x to the first, there's an x to the second, we can't get x by itself. So whenever we have x squared and an x, we have no choice but to factor. To factor means to write it out as something times something else. Okay? And we worked a lot on this la a couple years ago. It'll be interesting to see how much uh, you remember how quickly this comes back to you. What goes in the front of each one? X. Why? Because X times X gives me X squared. Okay? What are my signs going to be here? Plus and plus. Okay? Since everything's positive here, everything's going to be positive down here. Okay? So now these two numbers, the thing that has to be special about these two numbers is they need to multiply together to give me 2. There's only one option in this case. 1 and 2. Okay. But is that right or is it not right? Well, let's take a look at it. We've got to check these right here. I have a 1x and a 2x. If I add them together, I get... 3x, so I know it's factored correctly. Okay? So 
So that's basic factoring. We're just going to do several examples today and probably today and the rest of today and tomorrow. Um, you're going to have some worksheets. So in this case, what we have, this, is, this cannot be overstated how important this is. But if I have A times B to give me zero, what's one of them got to be? Zero. The only way I can have two things multiplied together to give me zero is either if A is zero or if B is zero. So that's what I've done over here. I've got two things multiplied together to give me zero. What can I plug in here to make that zero? Negative one. So since negative one would make that zero, zero times whatever would give me zero. What can I plug in here to get zero? There's my two solutions. Okay. Now if I would go back, I could definitely check them. Negative one squared gives me one. Plus negative three plus two gives me zero. Negative two is going to work fine as well. Okay. So let's do a little bit harder one. Okay. X squared minus X um, minus six equals zero. Okay. Again, there's two different powers of X. We have no choice but to factor it. Okay. X and X obviously in the front. What are my signs going to be? How do you know that, Jaron? You're exactly right. How do you know that? Okay. But how do you know that if they're both negative, we've got to have one of each? That's just the way it is, man. Because you need a 3 and a 2, and 1 has to be positive for one to, be for, to make a negative 1. Yeah, because if I break this negative 6 up, I need to break it up into a negative number and a positive number to give me that negative 6. I have no choice. Okay? So if you're somebody who really likes a little bit of guidance, then here's what we can, here's what we can tell you. If I have ax squared plus bx plus c, that's going to factor into plus and plus. If I have an ax squared, bx, and there's a minus c, I don't care what that is, I'm going to have one of each. Okay, why? Because I've got to have two numbers that multiply together to give me a negative c. Negative times a positive. Okay? If I have ax squared um, minus bx plus c, what are my signs going to be here? Both minus. Why? Because I need a negative times a negative to give me a positive c, but yet when I add them together to get a negative b. So if you're somebody who needs a little guidance with that, boom, there's your, there's your summary. Okay, so now I've got my, my factors of 6, or to give a negative 6, it could be 1 and negative 6, negative 1 and 6, 2 and negative 3, or negative 2 and 3. Which one's it going to be? Which one can I add together to get negative x? Negative 3, positive 2. Negative 3, positive 2. So negative 3. Positive 2. Let's double check it. X squared. Boom. Negative 6. Got it. Let's double check my middle term. If I add them together, I get negative x. Good. So what's my solution from this part? 3. I can plug in 3 to make that 0. What about from this part? Try a couple more. Excuse me. Now I've got a two out front. 
2x squared. What am I going to put in the front? 2x and x. Y, x times x gives me x squared. 2 times 1 gives me 2. Three, the only options I have are one and three. My signs, for the reason I just talked about up there, are going to be negative and negative. I need a negative times a negative to give me a positive, but when I add them together, I get the negative. So let's just try this. Um, well, let's go like this. Three and one. Is that right? Let's check it. Negative 3x, negative 2x, is that what I want? No, I got a negative 5. And this is why pencil with these is a good idea. <laughs> is that right? Negative x, negative 6x, combine it to give me negative 7x. Good. So that is factored correctly. Okay, so my solutions, let's go back to my solutions now. This one is pretty obvious. I'm going to get x equals 3. But what am I going to get there? Yeah, because if imagine if you would set that equal 0, just think about it. I would have to add 1 and then divide by 2. I would have to add 1 and divide by 2. Okay. So let's do something else here, just on a little different event. What if I had 2x plus 5 and 3x minus 4? What would my solution be from this part right here? Think about it. If you had to set equal to 0, what would you have to do first? You have to add 4 and then divide by 3. What about this one? If you set that equal to 0, subtract 5, divide by 2. There's my two solutions. Okay? So, that's what we're going to be working on for the next couple days. Factoring and solving. Factoring and solving. Okay? But I think it would be wise to do worksheets. So I'm going to take a little time, find a worksheet here. Um, I did not have the time to do that before school today, so I'm going to do that right now.
assignment and it might even be a little bit you know into Friday we'll have to see showing this there's no reason you can't get that done I'm gonna pause it take a screenshot blow it up do what you gotta do